Get that baby worm in his mouth. <laughs> Little, big. So we arrive in Spain and we're going to get to spend one full day in Madrid before we head down to the Sonar Euro Cup. You know, this is another amazing part of the trip that doesn't involve fishing. Uh, so cool hanging out in the city of Madrid. Uh, the history, the culture, the people, and especially the food and drinks. Possibly the best chorros y chocolate in the entire world. Unbelievable. You know, getting there was a challenge. Let's see if the big ones fit first. If the big ones don't fit, we're screwed. Okay, you guys climb in and we'll give you the rest of the bags. No good start. Oh God. I gotta be honest with you. I threw my hands up. I'm not trying to drive in Madrid. Uh, I let Becky drive. We made it. We're in the rental car. Notice, I'm not driving. Miss Rebecca driving, doing a way better job than me. I'm supposed to be the navigator, but instead I'm making this video. In three quarters of a mile. Right now. Keep left to merge onto M40 toward R3. Um, want to give you a little update? Heading toward Madrid. Look at this beautiful, arid, desert-like surroundings we have here. And what's the speed limit, Miss Rebecca? I think 80 <laughs> kilometers. 80 kilometers per hour. I don't know, it's gotta be like 230 miles an hour. The streets were crazy tight. Driving through Madrid. Driving through Madrid. I thought driving through South Philly was bad. It looks like at this, up here you make a right. Plaza de Preto. If you think New York and Philly are rough, just go to Madrid, it's unbelievable. Still good, still good, still good. Good. The city itself was beautiful, but I'm anxious to hit the road the next morning to head down to the Sonar Euro Cup. So, Spania. Beautiful city. Madrid, Spain. Good morning, Spain! So we make the two hour drive south of Madrid. I would call this terrain mountainous, desert-like, and if you want to talk about a rural road in the middle of nowhere, check this out. <laughs> Beck, are we out in the middle of nowhere or what? In the middle of nowhere. A lot of olive trees out here. See a lot of olive trees. What else do you got going on out here? A little bit of rock. Some farming. What else? Very desert. Very desert life out here. Um, heading out to the reservoir. This is where Euro Cup is going to be this week. Here, representing the United States on behalf on behalf of Abu Garcia. Oh, I saw a little water. Very excited about my chance to fish this tournament. Um, got to fish this event back in the early 2000s, and uh, for Team US, and we had. A uh, team of six and eight anglers when we were here before, but this year, solo representing the United States. Going to see if uh, we can get the big W this week. Let's see what happens. Ah! Yay! We found our man. Hi! It's a happening town! Welcome! <laughs> Welcome to the middle of Spain! Wow! <laughs> How, How you doing? Nice to meet you. Good to meet you! Dave, so uh, 
you want to follow me? We'll, we'll go to the house quickly, yes. and then we'll, we'll get... Sounds good. You said everybody, and... Okay. 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 We found it. Yay! And then finally, we arrive at the lake. And this reservoir is unbelievable. You know, when I first set eyes on it, it reminds me a lot of the Western reservoirs in the United States. Looks a lot like Havasu or Mead or Pleasant, all those lakes on the West Coast here in the States. It looks just like it. Um, this is gonna be hectic because I'm only gonna get one day of practice and then I'm gonna be thrust straight into the tournament. All right, Dave, tell me the, what is the exact name of this lake so everybody knows? Uh, it's it's uh, Lago de uh, Cigara, I Ooh. think. Cigara. Cigara. It's spelled Cigara. Okay. Cigara. So, Cigara. Uh, All right, so Lake Cigara. If you're fishing, if you're fishing. Whoa! Uh, what is, uh, wait, look. I don't feel Abu Garcia Ike series. Kill the bug. Good job. What? You know, I meet my partner for my day of practice, and it's a guy named Bastian, and he's a French guide that guides in that part of Spain, but he's not a bass guide, he's a pike guide. But we meet, and we have a great practice day. You know, we fish sort of the whole lake, and we figure out that we can catch a few in clear water, especially in the morning, but when we go up the river and get into dirty water, the fish are shallow and they're biting. So we're super confident about our practice. The practice day ends and we're, we're, we're basically, we have to go right to our meeting. And when I get to this meeting, I realize how big the Sonar Euro Cup is. There are thousands and thousands of participants from all over the world. Poland, Germany, Portugal, France, United States. This is a true world-class event. The best way to describe the Sonar Euro Cup it's Europe's version of the Bassmaster Classic. You know, here we are, it's the start of the Sonar Euro Cup, and I'm excited. Um, it's great just being here, having a chance to represent the United States in this event, but this is a tournament. And at the end of the day, I don't care that this is a new place, it's a new fishery, I wanna win. We've got a great game plan, starting in the clear water for the first hour, and then camping in the dirty water. And you know, this is really gonna be a one-two punch event for me. It's gonna be power fishing with a small jig, and it's key to throw that jig tight to the bank and work it down over the rocks. And then after a few passes of that, it's really important to throw a finesse lure. You know, in my mind, if things go right, with this one-two punch, power fishing, followed by finesse fishing, a 20 pound bag of bass is possible. I can't tell you, it's, it's like magic. When things are going right and you're making good decisions, um, catch a big one right off the giddy in the clear water. Then it slows down, and as soon as we get up that river to the muddy water, it just starts happening. fish up there is a four pounder. Next one's a four and a half. Next one's a five pounder.
And we literally left that area early to save some for the second day. Um, right before we weigh in, I look in that live well, I stick my head down there and I'm like, oh my God, we've achieved 20 pounds, if not more. Um, so super happy with how the day went, but now it's time to weigh them in and see where we end up. You know, we get to weigh in, and now it's time to, to weigh these fish. And this weigh in is a professional weigh in. Um, we've got holding tanks, we're staging. Uh, then it's finally our turn to bring our five fish to the scales. We get up there, and they put the fish on the thing, and all of a sudden they say, the weight in kilos. And I'm excited and I'm happy, but I don't know kilos. So I quick whisper to Bastian, and Bastian whispers back to me. 21 pounds for the day. We have total, we have 9.660 kilos. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I think it's a lot. Great first day. There it goes, right there on the ticket. 9.660 is the weight for the first day. That's the kind of start we wanted. Good first day. But you know what? We're not leading. We're actually in second. One of the teams, the teams from Poland, weighed 22 pounds. So we're excited, we're happy, we're pumped up. But you know what, we're not leading. We gotta go out and catch them the next day. So head home, get a good night of sleep, and I'm excited for day two and try to win this Sonar Euro Cup. You know, day two is gonna be a different day for us. Um, we're gonna have the same conditions in the morning, cloudy, windy a little bit of rain but once that system goes through it's going to be high sun no clouds post frontal we know what we're up against day two we're up against an early window we know they're going to bite early and then we kind of have a feeling it's going to get tough you know sure enough we go out there and right off the giddy we start catching them Definitely these fish aren't as big, but we're getting some bites. We're up to four fish in about an hour of fishing, and then all of a sudden that magic bite comes. Um, I set the hook. Man, I know this is a big one. Fight it to the net, bash your nets it, and there it is. It's a five pounder on day two to secure our five fish limit.
You know, it's definitely not the bag we've had day one, but it's a great start. We've got a lot of time left in day two. You know, just as we predicted, um, the front goes through, the rain and wind stop, the clouds go away, and it's like a light switch. As soon as that happens, we just stop getting bit. I mean, I'm, I'm trying everything in my box. I'm trying to switch it up, finesse, and the bite has just shut down. Um, so we're grinding. I literally think we've went three hours without catching a keeper. But we make a decision just to stay in that area, stay in the dirty water, stay up river, and commit to it. In the last hour before we have to run back, you could feel the life starting to get active. You see the bait starting to jump. And we end up getting a couple key bites at the very end, including one about three and a half pounds that let us call. We make the run back and you know it's a different feeling because I know this isn't a 20 pound bag and is it going to be enough? We get to weigh in and uh, man this is, this is amazing. The fans, the families, the spectators that are at weigh in, it's crazy. Um, I've seen big tournaments in the states, the Bassmaster Classic, uh, the MLF Cup events, you know I've seen some big tournaments. But there are thousands of people here to watch this weigh in. We are definitely nervous. Um, we're being held to the very end. They're trying to build some suspense and drama. And we need a little over 17 pounds to win. So I'm nervous. So we walk up to the stage, they put our fish on the scales, and I know we need over 17 pounds. They announce the weight in kilos, and I'm, I, I don't know what that means. So I'm looking around, I look at Bastion, and he says, 18 and a half pounds. Boom! Man, what a great feeling. You know, that's the thing about fishing and fishing tournaments. I don't care if it's a five person club event or if it's the Bassmaster Classic or the Euro Sooner Cup. That feeling of knowing you were the best in that given day. Uh, it's a great feeling. Um, this weigh-in is amazing. We get up on the podium, we're holding our trophies, we're holding our prize check, and the confetti comes blasting out. Uh, it's unbelievable, uh, you know, to, to be on a podium, to win the gold, to win this event, not just for me, but for the United States. Man, this is uh, an experience. This is a tournament I will never forget in my life. Um, my trip to Spain, 100% a success. The final walk to the plane, heading back to Philadelphia. Is everybody back there? Looks like we're on a big one today. Jumbo, a jumbo airline. Here we go. Come on, let's fly. There you have it. Folks at home, folks at home, Paris and Spain, head it back home. That's a wrap. Churros y chocolate. For information on the product and gear used in this show, go to MikeIconelli.com and follow me on my social feeds, at Mike Iconelli. And if you want to help grow the sport of fishing, get kids involved. Go to theikefoundation.org to figure out information on how you could help get involved in getting kids fishing.